So, yeah, I, I think at this point that's the best. Howdy, folks. So I wanted to share a experience I got a few months back at a uh, personal development conference I went to. It's, um, it's a little bit psychological, so I hope you'll bear with me here, but it's got a good takeaway. So um, saying I can't robs you of your happiness. I see some, well, silhouettes of nods anyway, so uh, for those of you don't, that don't believe me, let me, um, let's talk about happiness for a second. What's the recipe for happiness? Anyone know? Orgasms. Cinnamon and nutmeg, orgasms. Um, I didn't quite hear that one. Giant cuddle puddles. Giant cuddle puddles. That's a, those are all, those, those are, those are, that's a little girl, I believe. Um, no, the, the, the recipe for happiness, the Buddha came up with it millennia ago. Expect nothing, be happy. Easy to say, hard to do, I think we all know that. How does, what does that mean in our, in our daily lives here? Here's, here's where it gets a little psychological. I'm gonna talk about something that the therapists and psychologists call locus of control. Now, doing research for this talk, I found out that my concept of locus of control is not actually what the therapists and psychologists consider locus of control. They have a lot more crap going along with it, with measuring things and whatnot. What I want to talk about is knowing what you have control over and what you don't. Understanding that line and letting the stuff you don't have control over go. This boils down very, very much to the, uh, the serenity prayer. I believe it runs something like, um, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Grant me, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. This is a little bit about the, the power that comes along with making the decisions of what you can change and what you can't. So, Locus of control, things you have control over. For example, for those of you tonight who are not here, I'm sorry, we're having a great time. You may have expected to be able to come to open stage tonight. Something may have come up at the last minute, and the last, you know, 5.30 rolls around, and for whatever reason, you're unable, unable to come. That was an expectation that you had to come out tonight to enjoy the company that we have tonight that you do not have now, and you are unhappy because of the result. A broken expectation. Here's something I think that we can all uh, empathize with. You're driving down the road, you're driving down the highway, three lane highway, 70 miles an hour, you're having a good time until you come up to three cars in a row going 65, 65, and 63. You hear the groans, I can feel the tension just rise. Now the 30 seconds it takes you to get past this roadblock and the five seconds later that you arrive at your destination, that's not what you're upset about. You're upset about the loss of your control. So this is a few of the things what I mean about locus of control. Things that you expect to have control over that you don't. Saying I can't when I actually can removes the power of your decision. And make no mistake, you make hundreds of decisions every single day, small things, large things, Decisions that you made years ago that you keep making every single day. Decisions that you got from your parents that you don't even know are expectations of your life that you make every single day. Decisions that you make at the moment of, of an impulse, this is a good thing for me, I will do this. Or this is a bad, bad thing for me, I will not do this. All of these are the decisions we make and most of them we don't do consciously. Say for instance, if I'm on a diet, go out to dinner. With, some very fine folks tonight. Dessert comes up, or the server comes up, asks, do you want some dessert? We have a really nice cheesecake. It's like, oh, I really love cheesecake. It's, 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 it's milk, it's sugar, it's fat and salt, and, and everything my, my taste buds want. I want some tea cheesecake, but oh no, I, I can't have the cheesecake, I'm on a diet. I can't have the cheesecake. I have the money for it. I can buy a cheesecake if I wanted to. I have the capacity. I'm not lactose intolerant. 
The only thing bad about it is it's high, you know, it's dense calorie content. I have the capability, I can physically stab my fork into that cheesecake, break a bite off and lift it to my mouth and usually do it without injuring myself. <laughs> I can absolutely have that cheesecake. What I choose is the greater value of not having to work off those 500 calories on the treadmill the next day. This is my metaphor. The, the, the power of choice, the power of, of saying I can or I choose not to, and knowing the difference of what is truly out of your control and in your control. I can't, I have a boyfriend, she says. No, I choose not to because my relationship with my boyfriend is worth more than the activities you propose. I can't, I have to work. No, I prefer to keep my job rather than blowing it off and losing it. I can't, what will the neighbors think? <laughs> No, my need to be well regarded by my, my social proximity is more important to me than flaunting my individuality. I can't. Boats make me seasick. No, I prefer not to vomit over myself and my friends in a small cramped enclosed prison. <laughs> often, often the case. Know what the choices that you have and accept the choice, the power of your choice, and, and you, will, you will have a happier existence. Being able to say, uh, being able to say I can, but I choose not to, is more empowering than saying I can't, because then you start in the negative loop with yourself. If, you say, if I can't do this, then I can't do that, and I can't do that. And before long, you start believing yourself. So my challenge tonight for you is not to change any behaviors or not to change any value systems. You still have to do the hard work of knowing what's good for you and what's not. The challenge for you tonight is to change your perception. Use I can't as a self-edit. I can't, I mean, it would be unwise for me to have another drink because I need to drive home tonight, but thank you. I choose not to. Know why you're doing what you're doing. Every time you say you can't, you're claiming powerlessness. Every time you say I can't, you are claiming that you don't have a choice, that you give up your decision. Every time you say I can't, you're making yourself just that much more unhappy. And I don't believe that of you people. I call bullshit. So take, take the power that you know you have and take it home with you. Bless you all.